Do you also have old pictures of yourself or close ones that didn't age well or that you or your parents took before we could produce high quality images? I do. And I felt like those memories were damaged forever. Boy, was I wrong. This new and completely free AI model can fix most of your old pictures in a split second. It works well even with very low or high quality inputs, which is typically quite the challenge. This week's paper called Towards Real World Blind Face Restoration with Generative Facial Prior tackles the photo restoration task with outstanding results. What's even cooler is that you can try it yourself in your preferred way. They have open sourced their code, created a demo, and online applications for you to try right now. If the results you've been seeing aren't convincing enough, just wait until the end of the video. Not only to support my work, which I'd be grateful for, but also because I believe it's important to understand how it works and its limitations, which is really interesting as it gives us insights into what they are working to improve and the following results will blow your mind. But first, allow me to come back to last week's video since I wanted to share something about this episode's sponsor, Weights and Biases. In last week's video, which you should definitely watch if you haven't yet, I shared the top 5 articles of the month and a great one covered tips from a Weights and Biases user. Have you ever left a long-running ML experiment to train and had a very sad moment when you saw that the training had crashed? Well, then you'll love this new feature. Along with tracking your experiment's metrics, now with alerts, weights and biases can also proactively notify you when things go wrong. You can be notified via Slack or email if your training has crashed or whether a custom trigger such as your loss going to none or a step in your ML pipeline has been reached. It's really easy to set up and you can get started with weights and biases alerts in two quick steps. Turn on alerts in your weights and biases user settings. Create your custom triggers and add WNB alert to your code, wherever you'd like to be alerted for a custom trigger. And that's it. I have insights that many users already have saved large cloud GPU bills by being alerted early to crash runs while training large expensive to train models, which is pretty cool. Try out weights and biases alerts now using the first link in the description below. I mentioned that the model worked well on low quality images. Just look at the results and level of detail compared to the other approaches. These results are just incredible. Note that they do not represent the actual image. It's important to understand that these results are just guesses from the model, guesses that seem pretty damn close. To our eyes, it seems like the same image representing the person. We couldn't guess that a model created more pixels without knowing anything else about the person. So the model tries its best to understand what's in the picture, fill in the gaps, or add pixels if the image is of low resolution. But how does it work? How can an AI model understand what is in the picture and, more impressing, understand what isn't in the picture? such as what was in the place of the scratch. Well, as you will see, GANs aren't dead yet. Indeed, the researchers didn't create anything new. They simply maximized GANs performances by helping the network as much as possible. And what could be better to help a GAN architecture than using another GAN? Their model is called GFP GAN for a reason. GFP stands for Generative Facial Prior, and I already covered what GANs are in multiple videos if it sounds like another language to you. For example, a model I covered last year for image upsampling called Pulse uses pre-trained GANs like StyleGAN2 from NVIDIA and optimizes the encodings called Latent Code during training to improve the reconstruction quality. Again, if this doesn't ring any bell, please take a few minutes to watch the video I made covering the Pulse model. However, as they state in the paper, these methods, referring to Pulse, usually produce images with low fidelity as the low resolution latent codes are insufficient to guide the restoration. In contrast, GFP GAN does not simply take a pre-trained style GAN and retrain it to orient the encoded information for their task as Pulse does. Instead, GFPGAN uses a pre-trained StyleGAN2 model to orient their own generative model at multiple scales during the encoding of the image down to the latent code and up to reconstruction. You can see it here, where we merge the information from our current model with the pre-trained GAN prior using their channel split SFT method. You can find more information about how exactly they merge information from the two models in the paper linked below. 
The pre-trained StyleGAN 2 is our prior knowledge in this case, as it already knows how to process the image, but for a different task. Meaning that they will help their image restoration model better match the features at each step using this prior information from a powerful pre-trained StyleGAN 2 model known to create meaningful encodings and generate accurate pictures. This will help the model achieve realistic results while preserving high fidelity. So instead of simply orienting the training based on the difference between the generated fake image and the expected or real image using our discriminator model from the GAN network, we will also have two metrics for preserving identity and facial components. These two added metrics called losses will help enhance facial details and, as it says, ensure that we keep the person's identity or at least we do our best to do so. The facial component loss is basically the same thing as the discriminator adversarial loss we find in classic GANs but focuses on important local features of the resulting image like the eyes and mouth. The identity preserving loss uses a pre-trained face recognition model to capture the most important facial features and compare them to the real image to see if we still have the same person in the generated image. And voila! we get these fantastic image reconstruction results using all this information from the different losses. The results shown in this video were all produced using the most recent version of their model, version 1.3. You can see that they openly share the weaknesses of their approach, which is quite cool. And here, I just wanted to come back on something I mentioned before, which is the second weakness have slight change on identity. Indeed, this will happen, and there's nothing we can do about it. We can limit this shift, but we can't be sure the reconstructed picture will be identical to the original one. It is simply impossible. Reconstructing the same person from a low definition image will mean that we know exactly what the person looked like at the time, which we don't. We base ourselves on our knowledge of humans and how they typically look to make guesses on the blurry picture and create hundreds of new pixels. The resulting image will look just like our grandfather if we are lucky enough, but it may as well look like a complete stranger and you need to keep that in consideration when you use these kinds of models. Still, the results are fantastic and remarkably close to reality. I strongly invite you to play with it and create your own idea of the model and results. Let me know what you think and I hope you enjoyed the video. Before you leave, if you are interested in AI ethics, we will be sending the next iteration of our newsletter with Martina's view on the ethical considerations of such techniques in the following days. Stay tuned for that.